this first question, I uh, well, the way that it was posed uh, or submitted in the survey was, does a function like this need to be implemented differently if on a big Indian versus a little Indian machine? And I thought this was, was a, a good question. I think this is a kind of a common confusion when it comes to Indianness. And then there's a couple of other interesting topics we can get into as well. But just to give a bit of an overview of what what's going on here, there's a function called read 64-bit timer. And an input to that function is essentially a, uh, a V table, if you will, a set of pointers that refer to volatile low and high bits for the current timer. Uh, so in this case, there's 32 bits for the low side, 32 for the high side. So we have 64 bits in total for this timestamp. And the job of this function, and presumably the task set before this person was to implement this function, is to combine or to read and combine those two elements and return a single 64-bit timestamp value. And I realized that in at least some systems, sometimes this might look as a number of seconds followed by a number of nanoseconds or something like that. Uh, but in this case, they're just calling these both two halves of the same number. So kind of contrived, but that's sometimes how interviews are. And we can see that the implementation that, that was shared with me included a very brief read of the high and low bits. And then this was kind of where the pertinent question was. And I'm going to talk about this section in a little bit. But I want to get to this first question first, which is to actually combine these two together, what do we need to do? And what we see here is a couple things that are all very important. Uh, first, we can see that they are bit shifting the high bits over by 32. So hopefully we have, in the end, our high bits up here and our low bits down there of our 64-bit data type. So we're shifting those over and then we're oring it with the lower bits. So that's, that's great. That's exactly what we're looking for. One common thing that's missed when, when asked to do this sort of thing is this cast here to 64 bits. Because without this cast, if this cast was not here, if we shift, shifted this 32-bit, oh, sorry, this 32-bit type over by 32 bits, what we would end up with is this being just value zero. Because we essentially got rid of all the bits. So we need to make sure that we first cast it to a 64-bit type so that we essentially have space to move it into. And once we have that space, then we can do the shift and the or, and we end up with hopefully everything that we're looking for. So that's the code that we have here. And the question that was posed, and I want to open this up to everyone here and get people here's thoughts as well, is... Do we need to change our implementation if this is a big Indian machine? And I know, we actually, actually, we didn't really dive deeply into the Indianness yet on Sunday. So just as a brief refresh, and we talked about it very slightly, in a big Indian, if you have a, a number, say zero, oops, let's just go back. We have a number like this. This is kind of our conceptual or logical number. Like this, this number presumably has meaning to us. It could be stored in memory a number of different ways. Uh, and we talked about how a number of different ways that looks like. But if it's an unsigned integer, uh, the common approach in C is to store it kind of unmodified, if you will, using this same general notion. But the question of Indianness says, of these four bytes, which order do they need to be placed in memory? So on a big Indian machine, in memory, we would see our four bytes like so. 
And on a little Indian machine, we would see our four bytes like that, where each one of those is a byte in memory. So that's our brief refresher on Indianness. We'll talk about a bit more on that on next Sunday. So back to this question, do we need to change our code or have two different implementations based off of whether or not the system this runs on is a big Indian or little Indian machine? So let me open it up. Feel free to unmute yourself or speak in the Q&A box if you have a thought on this front. All right, I'm not hearing any thoughts or seeing any thoughts, which is fine. Uh, it's This is something that isn't immediately obvious if you're not kind of more intimately familiar with how Indianness plays a role. And the somewhat humorous part is that most people do this correctly if left to their own devices. It's usually only once they start learning about Indianness that they kind of start to overthink it all. So the cut to the chase, the answer is no. You don't need to have a separate implementation for big Indian versus little Indian. This code here will work fine regardless. So the question you might have is, well, why or how in a sense? Uh, if on a big Indian machine, the order of the bytes is swapped, is reversed, and down here we are manually trying to create an integer and we wanna make sure that the high bits are in the correct place. Because as we see up here, the high bits of, of uh, this number in a big Indian machine are up here and the high bits of the same number in a little Indian machine are down there. So it's natural to think, oh, well, maybe we need to reverse these two in the case of a little versus big Indian machine. But it's worth taking a step back and remembering that shifting, bit shifting, and frankly, all of our kind of bit and byte manipulation that we do, so anding and oring and XORing and so on and so forth, it all affects, well, I guess conceptually, the human readable bit pattern. Or maybe said more specifically, the bit shifting is performed on the value in the register, not the value in memory. So everything with regards to Indianness is generally speaking, a question of how is that data represented in memory? But the, the logical number and the number that we would see in a register, if you would look at the value in the register, that is always gonna be in this kind of logical form. So because the shifting always occurs on the value in the register and the register is always always has the same form regardless, regardless of the endingness of the system, this bit shift in this case will always be correct. So maybe just as a, a slightly simpler example, if we have something like uh, X, and let's do my same example as before, zero X, 0A, 0B, 0C, 0D. And then we have a UN 32TY. And we say Y equals X shifted over by 16. Then Y is always going to equal 0C, 0D, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's, that's always going to be the case, regardless of whether or not this code was run on a little or big Indian machine. It's worth pointing out that there are a couple exceptions to this and kind of obscure architectures. Uh, but as a general statement, this, this should be good enough for our purposes. Hey, Glenn, this is uh, Mason. Can I? Yep. Can I just uh, restate what you what you said? Sure, absolutely. So, so basically, what you're saying here is that when when you go to actually shift the data, um, that data um, is going to be loaded into a register. And so, if we were to put a breakpoint, um, you know, somewhere on that line and actually look at that data, 
then it would be represented the way that we, um, the way that we 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 would think that it was uh, represented if we were to write ourselves an example like you did, like hex zero a zero b zero c zero d. Yeah. Um, and so, as long as we are not inspecting the value in memory, then it's not a it's not a concern, I guess, for our for ourselves um, to to semantically or logically uh, manipulate that data. Is that is that what you were trying to say? That is correct. Uh, okay. This H1 in this case is going to look like what we expect it to once it's loaded into the register. Uh, it, with a, one, a, one maybe big caveat here. Uh, so everything I just said is, is true. What you just said is correct. We're all good. This is where it depends on the data type. So if you have a 32-bit data type that you are reading from memory into a register, you're loading it, it will be appropriately rearranged as needed. If you read a 16-bit data type into a register, it will also be appropriately rearranged as needed. Potentially the two bits, oh sorry, the two bytes are swapped. And if you read a one-byte data type from memory into a register, Obviously, no swapping is going to occur. There's no, there's no notion of ending this with, for a one-byte data type. What that means, though, is if you load into memory, let's say with this sort of notion. If you load memory such that it is in an array of bytes, let's say we did a mem copy from some location in memory we did a we did a mem copy from some location in memory into this byte array in that case the the system wouldn't have known to rearrange it because it wasn't aware of what data type it was 